Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today being Saturday, the 18th of February. So let's pray as we start this new day afresh. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Amen. All right, our psalm this morning is Psalm 68. Psalm number 68. So first the refrain. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so may they vanish away. As wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name. 
rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome. But the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain. At the presence of God, the, the Lord of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent down a gracious rain, O oh God. You refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. Your people came to dwell there. In your goodness, O oh God, you provide for the poor. <clears throat> the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings and their armies, they flee, they flee. And women at home are devoid, dividing the spoil. Though you strayed among the sheepfolds, see now a dove's wings covered with silver and its feathers with gold, with green gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings, it was like snowflakes falling on Mount Zalman. You mighty mountain, great mountain of Bashan, you towering mountain, great mountain of Bashan. Why look with envy, you towering mountains, at the mount which God has desired for his dwelling, the place where the Lord will dwell forever. The chariots of God are twice 10,000, even thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them, the Lord of Sinai in holy power. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received a tribute even from those who rebelled, that you may reign as Lord and God. Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day, for God is our salvation. God is for us, the God of our salvation. God is the Lord who can deliver from death. God will smite the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of those who walk in darkness. The Lord has said, from the heights of Bashan, from the depths of the sea will I bring them back, till you dip your foot in blood, and the tongue of your dogs has a taste of your enemies. We see your solemn processions, O God, your processions into the sanctuary, my God and my King. The singers go before, the musicians follow after. In the midst of maidens playing on timbrels, in your companies, bless your God. Bless the Lord, you that are of the fount of Israel. At the head there is Benjamin, least of the tribes. The princes of Judah in joyful company the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought in us. For your temple's sake in Jerusalem, kings shall bring their gifts to you. Drive back with your word the wild beast of the reeds, the herd of the bull-like, the brutish hordes. Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Vessels of bronze shall be brought from Egypt. Ethiopia will snatch out her hand, will stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Make music in praise of the Lord. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice, 
ascribe power to God, whose splendor is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. And our prayer. Blessed are you, gracious God. You make your home among the weak. You deliver us from death. You bring us joy beyond our imagining. To the praise of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to read um, the meditation on that psalm. It's, a, it's an amazing psalm. Psalm of deliverance, Psalm 68. <clears throat> it says, God defies our need categories. Consider this psalm. In it, the Lord is spoken of as both terrifyingly mighty and gently saving. He is both ferocious and meek. He is mighty. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered. Verse 1, when you march through the wilderness, the earth quaked. Verse 7 and 8. The kings of the armies, they flee, verse 12. The chariots of, of God are twice 10,000, verse 17. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute, verse 30. This is a God before whom the universe trembles. But he's also gentle, verse 5. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God. Verse 6. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. Verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. Verse 35, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. This is a God who delights to draw near in comfort to the weak. How are we to think about these two realities? What difference does it make that God is both mighty and merciful, both powerful and gentle? All the difference in the world. It means he's able to deliver us from all our difficulties and sins, and it means he enjoys delivering us. If he were mighty but not merciful, he could save us but would not. If he were merciful but not mighty, he would like to save us, but could not. But in Jesus, we see these two realities of who God is merge beautifully. Jesus is described as both lion and lamb, both omnipotent and gracious. He can be trusted. We can bank everything on him. He can rescue us. And he delights to rescue us. He wants to rescue us. Hallelujah. Amen. So I wanted to read that. And I think it's very good um, meditation on that psalm. All right, let's, uh, let's go to our collect for today. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives. Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> All right, our, our reading this morning from 2 
Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Yes, it says before. So all of it. No, it's not all of it. Um one to fifteen. Yeah, one to fifteen. <coughs> The Spirit of God came on Amaziah, son of Obed, Oded, Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach and without the law. But in their distress, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, and he was found by them. In those days, it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the lands were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another, because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Then he assembled all Judah and Benjamin and the people from Ephraim, Manasseh and Simeon who had settled among them. For large numbers had come over to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. They assembled at Jerusalem <clears throat> in the third month of the 15th year of Asa's reign. All that time they sacrificed to the Lord 700 head of cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder they had brought back. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. All who would not seek the Lord the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting and with trumpets and horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly, and he was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. Amen. So you seek God, he will be found. You don't seek him, you won't find him. <laughs> Simple. And um, Asa is doing some reforms. And, and of course, you, it's not just Judah and Ephraim anymore, but I'm, I'm, I mean Judah and Benjamin, but Ephraim and, uh, and Simeon and Manasseh and some, some of these who fled from the north because they saw where that the, the northern tribes are, are, are rebelling against God. So they fled to the south to join the southern tribes, um, and J Judah and, 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 uh, and, and, and Benjamin, to join those two tribes uh, as faithful because they, are, they remain faithful to God. The point is they are seeking God. They, 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 they want to worship God. And so if you seek God, you will, he will be found by you. You will find him. If you don't seek him, you won't find him. And, and that goes for all of us, sisters and brothers. When we seek God, we will find him. Because God is in the business of being found. God is not hiding. 
problem is we are hiding and unless we seek him we will not find him and that's the message of the the prophet to asa john chapter 20 is our reading our new testament reading from verse 19 to the end <clears throat> On the evening of that first day of the, of the week, when the disciples were together, when the doors locked, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the, the, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in, in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. That's a great, there's one more chapter to go, but that's a great way to end this section, isn't it? On the, the, on the resurrection. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, do you believe? Do you believe that this man, Jesus, is the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ, the very, the very Son of God? If you believe by believing, you might, you will have life in his name. Um, the story of Doubting Thomas. Thomas, um, who wanted to see for himself. Nothing wrong with that. The thing for Thomas was that he needed to see for himself. Because as, a, as an apostle, Thomas needed to be an eyewitness to the resurrection, just like the other disciples. And he, he, he could not go about preaching that Jesus was risen unless he himself was a, 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 an eyewitness to that resurrection. And Jesus gave him that. And this was a week later after his, res, after his resurrection. So the first Sunday, the first Sunday of his resurrection, he appeared to the disciples in a locked room, breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit and tell them, that they should go out, forgive sins. And those whose sins they are forgiven are forgiven. Those who are not forgiven will not be forgiven. In other words, the apostles, they are going to have special. And sisters and brothers, I think this is very important. These people are going to have special ability to forgive the sins of others. And, 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 and I don't think this was, um, this was just on anybody. This was for these disciples. Um, Jesus gave them the authority to forgive sins. And uh, so if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are, are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And, and it's, a, it's, 
in a one in one sense it's that it's that absolution that we pronounce on a Sunday uh, when, when whenever we confess our sins there is the absolution that the priest pronounces and in one sense that's what it is for us but it, it, I think it's much deeper for these disciples but it's that absolution if you have if you have confessed your sins we you are absolved of those sins and, and the apostles had the had the the authority to say your sins are forgiven you can now go and so we say we, in the absolution we we don't say i forgive you we say god has forgiven you of your sins um because i don't think we have the authority to forgive anyone but uh, but christ has and christ has given it to the apostles to these to these men who were there at the time thomas thomas even though even though and this is a, a, probably one of the greatest things about the scripture even though thomas was doubting and he, he has come down in history as a doubter thomas was a was w made one of the greatest confession of jesus's um divinity you could say in the scriptures when he saw the you know when he saw the nail prints in his hands and the spear print in his side and so on, thomas said my lord and my god there are some there are some accounts that he fell on his feet he fell on his knees in worship my lord and my god we don't know that because the text doesn't actually say that but he says my lord and my god and and by doing that thomas is saying that this this man jesus is not just lord but he's god and here sisters and brothers is the greatest confession that you could make of jesus christ my lord and my God, he is my Lord, and he is my God. And Thomas was the one to make that confession that has come down through history as the greatest statement of Jesus' divinity that we could possibly have <clears throat> in the scriptures. It is a confession of, of who Jesus is, but it is an act of worship, as Thomas did. And, 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 and his, um, the tradition of the church says that Thomas fell on his knees and proclaimed Jesus as Lord and God. Sisters and brothers, that is something for us today. To fall on our knees when we gather on a Sunday morning. That is our aim, to proclaim and worship Jesus, the resurrected Lord, as Lord and God. May we do that today. Amen. Let's pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Messiah, the Christ, the long-awaited Savior of the world. You have come to bring life to the, to, to, to the lifeless beings in our world. To those who are dead, you have come to resurrect. And so, Lord, we pray that we will have this life in, by believing in your name. Lord, may we never waver in our belief. And even though there may be times when we doubt, may we return like Thomas to that place of confession, of belief that you are indeed my Lord and my God. And so, O oh Lord, give us this confession today. Give us this belief today in our souls so that as we go about our daily life today, we will know that you are there for us. We have life in you and no matter what happens today, our life is secure in you, in your life. And so, Lord, we, we pray that you will strengthen us today for the journey ahead. Watch over our steps, we pray, that as we go, we will go trusting in your all-sufficient grace 
to protect us, to strengthen us, to guide us along our journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith, and salvation to all peoples on earth. We pray, Lord, for various parts of our world where there is injustice, where there is war and conflict, where there is disbelief and doubt, where there is despair. Lord, hear our prayer, we pray for the world <clears throat> in which we live. Remember the people of southern Turkey and northern Syria. We pray for them. Remember the people of Ukraine. Lord, we pray for them. Lord, we pray for others throughout the world. We, we think of those in various parts of the world where there is failed, failed governments like Haiti. Lord, we pray for them. Have mercy on these, we pray. And may your, may your grace be upon them in their weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you chose us in Christ to be your people and to be the temple of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will fill your church with vision and hope. Protect your people everywhere, O oh God, we pray. Watch over your church, and may your church in our own community and all over the world be the witness, the faithful witness that you have called us to be. The temple where people find meet, where people meet with God. The, 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 the house uh, in which you dwell. Lord, may your church be the witness that you have called us to be, the salt and light in this world. We pray for those who are persecuted, for those believers who, who live in fear of their lives today. We think of those in northern Nigeria and other parts of our world, many in the Muslim majority world, who's, who, who are secret believers, who, are, who dare not declare their faith in Jesus because of repercussions in their community from those who hate them. Lord, we pray for your, your, your people, those who believe in the name of Jesus Christ, who, those who confess him as Lord and God. We pray for them everywhere today, that you will be with them in their, in their daily lives and watch over them as they proclaim your name in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, O Lord, for those in our own community, those we know, those who are sick, those who are in pain, those who are suffering discomfort, those who are uh, even at the very end of life in their lives today. Remember them, O God, we pray. And bring health, bring healing, bring strength, but bring your grace to bear in the lives of those who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
<clears throat> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord guide you and guard you today, sisters and brothers. May the grace of God sustain you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.